So you saved up and you upgraded your jointer or planer to a new carbide helical head cutter and everything was fantastic. It cut like butter, the board surfaces were smooth and free from tear out, your machine ran a little quieter and you had more efficient dust collection and you haven't had to change the blades in months, maybe even years depending on how often you use it. But now it's time to rotate those little carbide cutters and when you do, you have problems. The head doesn't work like it used to. You may even be getting grooves in your boards or even broken cutters. What happened? Well, if you listen to my advice and you bought your Shelix or Lux cut head from mywoodcutters.com, you could have just called up Stefan. He'd have solved your problem quicker than you can say, I'm glad I listened to Stumpy. But you didn't, so you probably not only paid a little more for your head than you should have, but you also just don't have the same level of service. Okay, enough of the I told you so's. I'm here to help. This is a Lux cut cutter head. It's the new guy on the block when it comes to aftermarket upgrades. The quality is exceptional and its design eliminates some of the problems people typically have when they rotate their cutters. We'll talk more about that shortly. This is a Bird Shelix cutter head. It's perhaps the most well-known aftermarket upgrade out there. The quality is excellent, but there are some issues you have to watch for. Since this is such a common head, we'll start with it first. And I think many of the points we'll discuss will also apply to machines that have other heads pre-installed in them. Now when you rotate your cutters, be sure you use a Torx bit that fits properly. This can be a little tight if you've never loosened them before and you do not want to strip one of these out. The proper bit for a Shelix head is a T25. If you're having difficulty getting them to loosen, put on some good penetrating oil and let it sit a couple days. Not a couple hours, a couple days. I want to repeat, you do not want to strip one of these out. If you do, you'll have to spend a few hours with a rotary tool and a diamond bit drilling that screw out of there. Once the screw is loose, remove it and the cutter fully so you can clean beneath the cutter before reinstalling it. Debris beneath that cutter will prevent it from fully seating. If it doesn't seat properly, the cutter will be proud of the rest and it will leave a groove in your board. You may even break it, more about that shortly. So make sure the area beneath the cutter is clean and make sure the cutter itself is clean. This includes removing any pitch built up on the underside of the bevels. You may even just spray some bitten blade cleaner on the cutters before you remove them. Then use a toothbrush to scrub each one of them clean while it's still held on the head. By cleaning pitch from those bevels, you help ensure that the bevel that ends up against the indexing ridge after you rotate it will not ride up on it, which would prevent the cutter from fully seating. Now let's talk a bit more about that indexing ridge. It's there to ensure that each cutter is properly positioned and skewed at the right angle. But that ridge often causes problems when you try to reinstall the cutters, whether it's because of pitch buildup or simply because the cutter is crowding the ridge too much, it's possible for the underside of the bevel to catch on the ridge, making you think it's fully seated when it's actually raised up a little bit. Again, a cutter that rises proud of the rest will leave a ridge in your boards. And if you try to tighten a cutter that's not fully seated, it's likely to break. So besides cleaning your cutters and the surface beneath them, you must carefully reinstall them. Don't just center the cutter over the hole and drive in the screw. I recommend starting the screw a turn or two then using two fingers to lift the cutter upward so it seats against the tapered underside of the screw head while you tighten the screw, which will draw the cutter downward and into place. I know this sounds like a hassle, but it will eliminate many of the problems people have when they rotate their cutters and help prevent breaking. Now, how tight should your screws be? The manufacturer says about 45 inch pounds. Basically, this means get it good and tight with one hand and a screwdriver-like tool such as this. You don't want to tighten it so much that you destroy something, but you don't want dust to wedge itself beneath the cutter and lift it proud of the rest either. By the way, do not put Loctite on the threads. You may regret it when it comes time to take those off again. If you have a damp shop, you may wipe the threads with a little bit of anti-seize compound. Just a wipe though, don't fill the screw holes with it. Now what if you've done everything I said? You clean the cutters and the area beneath them so it's free from debris, and you let the tapered screw head draw the cutters back into position and you're still breaking them or you're still getting lines on the surface of your board. Well, in some rare cases, one or two screws may be bottoming out fully before they seat the cutter so they feel tight, but dust is still able to get beneath the cutter and wedge it upward. It's possible the thread holes weren't fully tapped at the factory. You may fix it yourself with a 1032 tap or contact the manufacturer. 
Finally, some who have very humid or damp shops have reported rust on the body of the head. If this rust gets beneath the cutters, they won't properly seat and you won't get a smooth surface or you may even break some cutters when you tighten the screws. Honestly, I'm not sure what can be done about this. I'd suggest you contact the manufacturer and ask them. The problems we just discussed, particularly the issues with the indexing of the cutters and the danger of surface rust, are fairly common to Bird Shelix heads, as well as some of the others that come pre-installed in machines. That doesn't make these bad heads. It just means you have to be diligent when you rotate your cutters. The LuxCut brand solves many of these problems. For one thing, the unique screw head design makes it virtually impossible to install a cutter improperly. You don't have to lift the cutter and let the screw draw it back down as you do with the other heads. You still must be sure everything is clean so no debris is caught beneath the cutters, but they will be much easier to install flat, even, and without breaking. The Lux Cut heads are also made from a more rust-resistant steel alloy, so corrosion doesn't seem to be as much of an issue. The only downside of the Lux Cut heads is that they aren't yet available for as many machine models as the Shelix heads are, but they're adding new models all the time. So if you haven't gotten a head yet, I'd seriously consider the Lux Cut version. They're equal in quality to the Shelix, they have some design improvements, they're a little less expensive, and they ship much faster if they have your model available, in days rather than weeks or months. Check them out at mywoodcutters.com or use the link below this video. Whatever head you own or decide to buy in the future, I hope this tutorial makes your cutter changes hassle-free. Mywoodcutters.com is the sort of small business I like to support. Stefan is a great guy, and he can find you knives and cutters for almost any joiner, planer, shaper, or molding machine. And his are the best prices if you're planning to upgrade to a helical carbide cutter head. Please use the link below this video to check with him before you buy somewhere else. Some small businesses are just worth supporting. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.